Yeah, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased uh, to be here today to present the future of a floating closed containment system. And I will now present quickly on the introduction of what is closed containment system. There are two types of uh, sea-based aquaculture system, the open containment and the closed containment. Uh, in the open containment, uh, one rely entirely on the external natural ecosystem for the temperature for oxygen by uh, having a good site location. In the closed containment, uh, it basically separates the fish from the external sea environment. In the FCCS, uh, they use the proven uh, technology in the re-aquaculture system. Or in the FCCS, you can use a flow-through system. It can be flexible, it can be rigid, it can be semi-flexible. The water treatment of the inlet water and the treatment of the water outlet is very important. At this uh, juncture, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Wong Chiming from the University of Queensland for co-authoring this article with me and the article can be found in the website as shown below. There's always a concern on the total cost of infrastructure and its operation. That means the capex cost or how much is your cost per kilo in your production and how much will be your opex cost per kilo in your production as well. Now and then the next is the availability of the infrastructure uh, in open net cage or be it a closed containment system. Is it durable and uh, what kind of power are you using? Is it off-grid power or do you generate your own power or do you use green energy? And I think the next part on the infrastructure is the ease of its construction, how difficult it is to mobilise the material to get it on site. Now the next thing is how do you reduce the dependence on uh, external uh, oxygen cylinder or rather should you uh, generate our own oxygen is another consideration. Uh, lastly, the most important is sustainability. It's all spoken, but how true are we in sustainability it depends on how we produce fish at every stage of our production. And lastly, on the social part is uh, do you create employment for the people where you farm? One has to design and develop a close containment system that is not pollutive now the cost of production is the next one that I mentioned earlier. It must be comprehensive all the way from farm to fork and to its value chain of being able to reach the customer and in its biological and ecological uh, performance. Manpower saving, are you saving manpower? Are you constantly relying on more manpower to do cleaning of the net? Or do you use the manpower to do the aquatic health of things? Do you have to select site that is pristine so that you farm more fish and they take all the nature's oxygen and, uh, and clean water? Or do you, are you able to deploy on a site that is close to coast and questionable and yet farm fish? How scalable are you and how mobile are you? And how can you adopt to the region around you and to the world in the global aquaculture space? Now in the next part of my introduction, I want to talk about farming uh, in the environmental sustainability. Now the ESG governance in FFCS is very critical. You have to be sustainable economically, that means you can produce more. In close containment, you prevent the rich nutrient the organic waste from going back to the ocean. In, in Singapore, uh, 30 by 30 is a vision for Singapore and uh, SFA, the food, uh, Singapore Food Agency, is pushing a lot. Now for food security, one must look at the accessibility of the food supply one must look at the availability of food supply and its accessibility. And we need to uh, further enhance our infrastructure that there's an ecosystem of things that makes our food fish easily available. In its accessibility, we want to know when you produce local, how competitive are you? Uh, you know, has consumer is willing to pay a price a little bit more for sustainable, wholesome fish, healthy fish, but they are also price conscious. Mentioned here in one of the articles that wrote about us, uh, it says uh, uh, nuts and boat sink or swim with innovation. So therefore the size of things is critical in our production of food fish. All this closed containment floating system must reduce the use of sea space. It must reduce the production cost. It must eliminate all the negative impact on its environment. Now let's talk about uh, pre-line. Pre-line is a floating closed containment system with its innovative uniqueness on being a semi-rigid raceway concept. Uh, you can see from the concept that uh, there is a HDPE tube 55 meter in diameter of capacity 2,200 meter cube. 
So in this particular case, uh, the uh, method of uh, with extended uh, uh, slot-shaped uh, tubes that forms the ingress for, sea, for a fresh air to the fish. The next is a salmon house. It's a concept of a simple bucket. Now this bucket is, is a rigid cylindrical uh, uh, shape with reinforced concrete. Now the reinforced concrete is steel fiber internally, uh, sorry, externally and then the styrofoam internally to give extra buoyancy. In this particular uh, salmon home bucket system, they have a capacity of 1,000 meter cube and it is said to be the world first concrete floating fish farm. The next uh, is the echo cage. The echo cage is a flexible uh, cylindrical shape uh, a wall system with using a heavy duty flexible wall. I think this eco cage claim and they said to have 99% survival rate, which is very, very good. Now, the next system, the fourth system that I'll talk about is the Aqua Farm Neptune. Uh, the Neptune uh, is a system that is developed with, developed with smart sensors that continuously monitor the internal environment. Uh, waste collection is also at the bottom where it is removed by a white large single pipe. Now the fifth one that I would like to talk about is called uh, the fish globe. It is completely enclosed structure. It is complete enclosed. So there is airtight and it is able to push water in and also be able to push and transport fish out during its harvest from the tank. Uh, it has a capacity to be able to hold 2,000 tons of fish. It works out to be a stock density of 66 kilo per meter cube, uh, which is very impressive. Now the sixth uh, uh, system that I would like to talk about is called the, uh, the fixed uh, closed cage floating closed containment. Uh, here's a, again a lot of smart system uh, in, in it and uh, it, can, uh, it can hold a large capacity of up to 10,400 meter cube with a diameter of 140, 160 meter. And additional buoyancy is from the 16-sided uh, floating steel collars. So I think uh, this is uh, Aqua Farm, the Neptune. Now the seventh system that I would like to talk about is the Eco Arc. Uh, this is a system that I have invented and patented. Now it's uh, uh, waiting for global uh, patent. Now it is a floating flow-through system. In this particular case, meaning to say 1,500 meter cube water flow directly through the four tanks that we have. Uh, but it's, it has the ability to switch to re recirculation system during the questionable time of oil pollution or during the time of uh, uh, toxic algae bloom or harmful algae bloom. It is a smart farm because we use a lot of sensory equipment because it is fully enclosed and uh, it is uh, sheltered with a green roof. Uh, we can have all the sensor position and uh, cleaning of it. It's easy. Calibration is done very easily. And it's highly productive because our stock density current is 50 kilo per meter cube. And uh, it is highly scalable because two or three equal can be put side by side together and uh, it is sustainable. Uh, sustainable because uh, we have a responsible discharge. Uh, we do not discharge water uh, directly from the culture tank. Uh, during its grow up phase, we pass the water siphonic out by gravity through a discharge trough, goes through the drum filter and then goes through um, a degas chamber where we put ozonated water to remove and gasify the ammonia and uh, because uh, the solid particulate are then uh, removed on my discharge. Our principal features are the dimension is a mere 48 meter by 28 meter length which is the size of an Olympic swimming pool and it has got two tier we call the main deck and the upper deck but we have 30 more tanks 6.5 meter cube uh, 6.5 meter cube uh, 30 on the upper deck for our nursery, post-nursery and hatchery. Now we also have our own gas production system where we produce our own oxygen, we produce our own ozone so that we, uh, uh, we can have uh, the water treated with ozonation before it reaches the uh, culture tank. So again, uh, it is smart because we also provide uh, automatic uh, feeder system and it is, uh, it is with a built-in uh, photo galvanic a solar cell, which means the solar panel cell is also the roof itself. Now, I would like to then highlight the article written by Singapore Food Agency uh, to the World Aquaculture Society. The website can be found. Uh, it's called the Singapore Aquaculture Industry Contributing to Singapore Food Security. This is the chart taken from figure 7. It shows the typical farming system in Singapore. The open net 
the tank above a wooden platform, the uh, adopted floating uh, barge, the smart floating farm, of which I added in the farming model for the future for Singapore coastal water. It's aquaculture 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 and 4.0. The 1.0 using the open net is a traditional farming method currently uh, employed all over Singapore mostly, but they're still heavily reliant on the nature, especially for them to grow their stock. Aquaculture 3.0 land-based area system or the floating barge system, automation is there and uh, the system uh, also able to monitor the water quality and also have a better husbandry technique. Whereas in, uh, in the aqua system or the eco spark that we are talking about in the future, which is the future of farming, we, will re we use a game-changing technology of having a novel offshore advanced house system where the platform uh, holds the tank below the water level. And because it's below water level, the water pumping rate is so low that there's very little energy required. And currently, we are aquaculture 4.0 because we hatch the eggs all the way in our upper deck and we grow them out to, uh, po to juvenile and we put them into our four big tanks, which is 500 meter cube each. And we grow them up in the first, in within the four months, we get 400 gram fish that we harvest and then we process them directly on board. Uh, we are also the first farm in Singapore that have uh, uh, a post-harvest the processing plant and it is licensed by the SFA and we are able to do uh, an, in one shift 500 fish, pieces of fish every day so that we can sell fish fresh. In my conclusion, I think uh, we believe that the near future of floating fish farm close containment system must play a significant role, that it must be able to not just be on the open sea in the deepest ocean so that the nature can wash away its, uh, its uh, waste from the fish, but it must be able to significantly protect the environment in both coastal and offshore deeper space. And on the design of a floating closed containment system, one must be able to look into any water embodiment. From the fresh water, you're able to be by the river, by the reservoir or in the lake. On the sea, it can be any coastal to deeper sea. So the benefit of the FCCS, the floating closed containment system, are it relieves the land space for the population as the world population grow. And the FCCS is also a proven technology now because of the high yield that is uh, environmentally and ecologically friendly and it must be scalable and uh, like I say over and over it must be sustainable to adopt the, the green energy and it must also uh, use nature and not borrow the future nature by using the oxygen and the clean water and return it back in a questionable way. So I think with this the future, the near future of, of uh, an opportunity for close containment uh, aquaculture system will be the way going forward. Thank you very much.